Hello everybody and welcome to this new video of Books Up Close. For those that are new here, my name is Chris Lloyd, I'm a lecturer in literature at the University of Hertfordshire and I bring you book reviews of things that I'm reading and enjoying. So today I'm going to review two books by Mary Gateskill and the reason I'm reviewing both of them at the same time is A because they're quite short, both of them are under 120 pages, and also because I feel like they have overlapping themes and interests. So the first is This Is Pleasure, which first appeared in The New Yorker and is now uh, published in book form. And the other is Lost Cat, and that was first published in Granta. Now Lost Cat, you could call a memoir. It's very short, but it's a very compact look at three kind of interlocking stories. One of a cat that Gateskill lost as well as the story of her dying father and some kids that she and her husband foster. And This Is Pleasure is a kind of long short story really about sex and power and gender. Lots of people have called it a kind of me too story, but that seems to kind of diminish it a little bit, I think. Both of them are interested then in relationships, in power, in the kind of interrelations between people. So This Is Pleasure is told through two narrators, Quinn and Margot. So they both work in publishing and the story opens when Quinn is basically fired from his job for sexual impropriety. So these allegations have been thrown at him by various women. Now he's one of those kind of like Lothario kind of figures in the literary world. So he is known for being very chatty with women. He kind of takes them into his confidence and so on and uses his power that way. And one of his really close friends is Margot, who we also hear from. And she kind of gives us another side of the story. Now, at first sight, this may seem like this story is going to go one way, right? We've got the man's story and then the woman's story, right? In this kind of quite crude binary. But actually, very quickly, we see that that's not what Gateskill is doing. She's far more interested in the murky and blurry areas between sexuality and agency and uh, retribution and so on. She is at once enabling us to kind of critique Quinn for his kind of grotesqueness, but we also see some of his desirability, I think, the ways in which certain women do flock to him like Margot. And similarly we see in Margot a kind of apologist for her friend, um, we kind of don't quite understand why she's apologising for him, but we also see how she interprets the kind of gender politics around her. So Gateskill isn't really setting out to write a story that says this is why men are bad or this is what Me Too has done, but rather she's more interested in those interlocking ideas of power in relationship to gender in particular. And I think it's no surprise that this is within the kind of publishing industry either, because this is also about stories, right? Who gets to tell their story? How does one get to tell their story and who hears it? The fact we have these alternating narrative viewpoints in short sections means that we're let into both sides of the story, even while there are obviously more than two sides to every story, right? It's actually far more complicated. So I think she's doing something quite interesting in pairing these narrators who are both complicated in and of themselves. So Lost Cat, as the title suggests, mainly follows Gateskill as she loses a cat that she has adopted in Italy. He's kind of astray, uh, he's blind in one eye and she finds him and nurses him back to health and then takes him back to the US. Now this little cat Gatino eventually runs away and the rest of the book is kind of spent following Gateskill as she looks for him. She goes to psychics, she goes to mystics, she asks people in the area to look out for him and it really follows through her grief of losing this cat and something that she has looked after. And that then opens up other narratives of care. So one is for her dying father, so it kind of looks into the relationship Gateskill has with his, her sisters and how they look after their father as he's dying. And then also it looks at two kids that Gateskill and her husband foster. So as part of something called the Fresh Air Fund, which is a system where uh, kids who are live in deprived areas in the city go to the countryside for the summer and for weekends. 
and Gates Gunner husband take in Caesar and Talia, who are two Latinx kids. And this story has already inspired some of Gates Girl's other work, her novel The Mare, which is an interesting, if flawed book. But really in this memoir, she's trying to get to grips with what it means to be a parent, what it means to look after someone, what it means to care for someone, really, in short. Gates Girl is very good in this book at drawing links between losses, between showing the kind of reverberations of one loss in relation to another. This reminds me of um, the psychoanalyst Melanie Klein, who kind of argues that when we lose someone, that loss triggers and unearths previous losses that went before it, right? So every time we mourn, every time we grieve, we bring back up those precursors to the loss you're feeling in the present. And Gateskill is really good at showing the interrelations between all of these. And Gateskill is very clear-eyed in the book. She kind of turns her gaze on herself as well as the people around her. And there are moments where she kind of acknowledges the complicated and thorny feelings she is experiencing. She'll say things like, you could call me silly, you could call me naive, you could call me those things, as though she's very much aware that that's how she's presenting herself and one would be within their rights to say that of her, but the feelings within are actually more difficult and complicated. In both texts, I feel like there is more to be said. I feel like their brevity is a strength in a way, but it's also a limitation. I think This Is Pleasure has further places to go. Although it's an almost perfect short story, I would say like there are places where I feel like I wanted to know more and there are parts of the characters that I wanted fleshed out. Similarly, Lost Cat is very, very short as a memoir. There is so much more that I wanted to know about. In particular, I really wanted to reflect a little bit more on the kind of racial implications of her looking after the two kids and the strange power dynamics that are involved, right? Where these poorer kids go out to the countryside to be looked after by this white family. She doesn't really say enough about the kind of white savior complex for example. That being said, both books are fantastic. They're really, really insightful. Her prose is wonderful as ever. Lots of people call her very cold or hard, um, but actually I think her writing is more precise, is probably the word I would use. It's very exacting and gets straight to the point. She's not interested in superfluous descriptions, for example. And I think that's a real strength of hers. If you've not read Gates Girl before, these are two great books to start with, though I would also point you to her short story collection, Bad Behaviour, which is, I think, one of her first books, um, which is unbelievably good. The writing in that is exactly as you'd want. So as ever, if you've read these books, please do comment below and let me know what you thought of them. If you've read other Gateskill stuff, let me know too. And also tell me what else you're reading. What books should I be getting to add to my pile, which is growing too big as ever. So please do like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell for notifications so you get these videos when they come through. And do keep in touch. And until the next video, do keep safe, keep healthy and keep reading. And I'll see you soon.